there is now no doubt the governor's councils, the rural councils, Obama launching the Libyan war and saying, I don't need congressional approval, carbon taxes without congressional rules uh, against uh, our industries. Uh, now they're announcing he's going to have executive orders for a no gun buy list, just like no fly list, what his former chief of staff called for years ago. We've played that video here. We have special reports up uh, that have just gone live at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com on this subject, Obama establishing a dictatorship. Now, he may leave. The point is, Ron Paul, Congressman Nadler, a big Democrat, they've all called this tyranny, the last nail in the coffin, Obama's becoming an emperor. That's what it is. Now, he may leave office, but the precedent is set for this power grab. So it's here. It's happening. And it's incredible. So we're going to be discussing that coming up at the bottom of the hour as well. Uh, somebody who's written about this for the last six years, he saw it happening under Bush. People said, oh, Dr. Corsi, the martial law didn't come. The point is, it's that slow creep, just like the Roman Republic towards absolute tyranny. But now it's not a creep. It's a gallop. And, and even the Pentagon told Obama, you've got to go to Congress for a new war. Even the Pentagon, that uh, president's never ignored those lawyers. And there's the headline, Emperor Obama to use war powers against the Congress. Yeah, he even threatened over the weekend, 14th Amendment, and said what we used against the South in Reconstruction when, when, when members uh, of the South in Congress wouldn't go for the incredible war reparations on the South, President um, Ulysses S. Grant just ignored it. So, so now the president controls the purse strings, the president controls the wars, the, the, the kill switch, the governor's councils, all of it. In fact, I want to get Dr. Corsi to talk about that first because I know he's a political scientist, worked in banking, and he's worried about this for many years. Wrote the late, great USA on the subject. Then we'll get into the big new Obama developments with Dr. Jerome Corsi. But do you concur with my analysis, Ron Paul's, even the uh, portly Nadler, big Democrat, that this is really dangerous what's happening? I think it couldn't be more dangerous. This is the this is a, a power grab at the a dictatorship of the presidency, unlike anything that's ever happened in our history. You know, it, it, I'm sure you go back to parallels and you know the Civil War with um, Abraham Lincoln suspending um, you know various rights. Doctor, speak up for me. Start over, Doctor Corsi, and then uh, start over. I think this is a tremendous power grab, Alex. I think it's one that's unprecedented in American history. And what you've got, what we should all fear is, like you say, once the power is in the presidency, it's never going to be reversed. It'll be now, you know, George W. Bush had executive orders that extended emergency powers. Now Barack Obama is extending presidential powers that would normally be emergency powers in situations that are not emergencies. Uh, but the crisis is going to continue to develop. I mean, we're now on the edge of Europe saying that Greece can actually default on some of its debt. And if Greece starts to default on its debt, the next strategy that's going to be put into place is the United States defaulting on some of our debt. And we're entering into a Great Depression that I think will make the previous Great Depression of the 30s look mild. And by the way, you predicted this a decade ago in uh, one of your best-selling books. You've yeah. written so many on the subject. Uh, America for Sale was really about this whole situation developing and, in fact, uh, saying it was inevitable that we were he if the globalists were creating this situation on purpose in order to push us into a one-world government. The solution of all this is going to be to destroy the dollar like George Soros has wanted to do for decades. It's going to be put the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank control the world economic situation. And I continue to say, you, you, people have got to read America for Sale, because my point there is that this is not a recession or a depression. This is what globalism looks like. The jobs are gone. Structural unemployment in the United States, where cheap labor is exploited, if not in China, then in Indonesia, or whatever part of the world it can be found in, that's going to be the future for the foreseeable future of the world economy, and the American middle class in the process is going to die out, was intended to die out. Absolutely. Uh, the middle class, the historic enemy of oligarchs and crony capitalists. Uh, I want to get back into that if we have time, but you join us today because there's been a lot of big developments 
on the whole hunt for the real birth certificate. Correct. Uh, they originally, of course, said that a receipt was the original, that no bank vault uh, copy existed. Then, magically, the new one came out that looked like it had been done by a three-year-old. Uh, where do we stand now? Well, the evidence is increasing. In fact, I'm writing a series of stories this week and next week to show that the uh, Obama birth certificate was forged using the Nordyke birth certificate and a couple of others that we now have as templates. I'm going to be able to show the cut-and-paste job, how the transformation of the information occurred, lifting the information off existing birth certificates, modifying it, cutting and pasting it to put into the Obama birth certificate. And the forgery is now obvious. Uh, we've had uh, experts in the Adobe software. Um, Mara Zabest has, has weighed in. She supported Doug Voigt's analysis. He is a typesetter who's owned a scanning company since the 1990s. Uh, the document the White House presented was not a scan of an original document, and I still doubt that there is any original birth certificate of this nature in the Hawaii vault. I don't think it exists. I think the, the PDF electronic file the White House released was the birth certificate. That's the file that was used to create the forgery, and from that file, the copies, the Xerox copies that were handed out at the White House including the one that supposedly had the seal on it, were printed from that PDF file. They were not Xeroxed or copied or scanned out of an original in the Hawaii vault. I don't think it exists. And if it does, I challenge the Hawaii Department of Health to release the best evidence of the document, the document itself, and submit it to independent forensic examination. That's never going to happen because the document itself doesn't exist. Dr. Corsi, we haven't talked in about a month. Uh, where is the lawsuit for $285 million against Esquire going? And for those that don't know, recap what Esquire did. Well, Esquire, once my book was published, Where's the Birth Certificate? Esquire, within the first hours, came on out and they said uh, in an article that did not identify itself as a, any kind of a spoof or satire, that Joseph Farah, the publisher of World Net Daily, had decided to pull the book because now that the birth certificate had been released, there was no need for the book, and that it was being reduced to pulp, taken off the shelves, and it just wasn't true. Uh, the book was not pulled. In fact, it became a New York Times bestseller. It looks like we'll sell. That we're headed towards 100,000 copies being sold. The book has sold very strongly since it was in print, and, but um, undoubtedly, when pulled. they did that and, 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 and they offered for you to refund the money at retail, uh, that would bankrupt you guys because, you know, you sell the book That's for right. like eight bucks to a publisher or, or, or to Amazon or to Barnes & Noble. They sell it for twenty four ninety five. dollars uh, So they were uh, also putting out a business announcement uh, to basically create the perception that there was a, a run on the book, a reverse run to dump the book, and undoubtedly, this had to have hurt sales. Well, it did hurt sales, and in fact, I was on many radio interviews where the radio announcers believed that the Esquire was true. Uh, the, the interview started out by saying, you know, what happened, that Joseph Aaron pulled your book? I said, no, it didn't happen at all that way. That was completely an Esquire lie, and I think it was what the White House had wanted to happen. This was their, their plan. I think, quite frankly, Alex, is that they thought that if, in fact, the White House did the stunt of releasing a birth certificate, I'm quite sure my book forced the White House's hand and, and caused them to release this forgery, uh, the, the book would be pulled. I think that, and if the book had been published, perhaps, by a major New York house, maybe the New York house would have pulled the book. They might have been right. They might have, their stunt might have worked at the White House. But World Net Daily, we've held, we continue to report this story. The birth certificate is an obvious forgery. 100%, I'm 100% certain it's a forgery. And now I'm naming the documents that it was forged from, and we will be now naming the various people involved in the forgery. I'm about to expose the entire network of what's called the OBOTs, the Obama radical supporters who have been uh, plaguing the websites, their own websites and all others, trying to cause disruption, harass anybody as a birther who 
dares to question Obama. Yeah, if this wasn't true, they wouldn't have been acting so suspicious for three years and Obama spending $2.2 million to block uh, the release of the long form they said didn't exist. Precisely, Alex. If this document existed, why wasn't it released three years ago? Why didn't the American people see this right away? And the evidence is increasing that Obama was not born in Kenya. I published the Kenyan documents for the Kenyan government where the Kenyan government told the, the Bush administration that the, they believe in Kenya that the Obama birth certificate was criminally removed from the records, criminally... And by the way, it shows the Bush administration was so into this that they were quietly looking into it. Correct. And, and you would think that that would now be big news, but they used the hoax of announcing uh, that your book had been pulled to just try to close the door on the whole subject and then magically bookend it with the bin Laden popping out of the Cracker Jack box. It's one of the biggest cover-ups in American history. It is. Stay there. Let's talk more about it on the other side with Dr. Jerome Corsi. We'll also talk about Donald Corsi, Trump. You dropped bombshells on me during the break. I said, man, they were really scared of this, that you know, he pulled that stunt right as your book came out. And I said, do you see the whole bin Laden thing as an opportune way to smoke screen as well. And you concurred that these were October surprises that they were saving for the election, but had to pull now. Break it down, Dr. Corsi. Well, I, I think the Obama administration had planned that the birth certificate issue would surface just before the election in November 2012, and they'd spring on the public with no time to analyze it, the forgery that had already been done and was being held for the right time, and also... The second October surprise I think we forced the Obama administration to use was to kill Osama bin Laden. I think they had, had trapped him and hunted Osama bin Laden down. They could have killed him any day they wanted. But instead of having these two big news stories, at just before the November 2012 election as October surprises to propel Obama into office, my book, Where's the Birth Certificate, being published, was so threatening to the White House that they had to use early these two prepared October surprises. We forced their hand. And I've been told that directly by inside information that, that leads directly back into the White House. Uh, Dr. Corsi, I know you have a lot of sources inside government and the military. Um, I know you've worked for the federal government in counterterrorism. Uh, let's just say you've got an intelligence type background. What is the word? Because obviously, you know, they lied about bin Laden fighting back. Uh, they supposedly threw him in the ocean. They had DNA released before anybody could release it. They admit they faked the White House Situation Room photo. That was admitted three days later. That was totally fake. Uh, the whole thing was a lie. What is the information you have? The information I have is that bin Laden died of kidney failure a long, long time ago. Well, you know, again, it's going to be very hard to prove any of these things. It's I've been focusing 100% on the birth certificate, and I can tell you the birth certificate is a forgery. It's a fraud uh, that was made up, and I can tell you exactly when it was done. It was done right after Governor Abercrombie could find nothing. In the yeah, he was in the newspaper saying I couldn't find anything. Right. And when that word came out, and then just before February 24th, I got called by my sources in Hawaii, uh, one of the, the moles that we've had within the Hawaii Department of Health went in and looked at the logbook, and suddenly the Obama fake birth certificate had been inserted into the logbook. So it's a fake document. It was created as a fake document. The whole thing is a manipulation. It's a big, big lie. The Hawaii Department of Health is still issuing long-form birth certificates to people who want to pay for them. This whole idea that was a special permission and the... Obama lawyers had to go out to Hawaii and get special dispensation to pick up the birth. That's all nonsense. Uh, within three weeks before the Obama birth certificate was released, I've got copies in my files of long-form birth certificates that were sent by the Hawaii Department of Health to people who paid $10 fees to get them. The whole thing is a lie. And I'm confident now that my book, that where's the birth certificate is so threatening to the Obama administration. The information in it about the Obama lies about his past and who he is. This is an undocumented president. We, it, and, but the lies continue. You know, I, I've proven that the Obama mother and father did not live together as man and wife. Now we got this immigration file coming out, and it's clear that the 
you know, the immigration department in, in where Obama was born doubted the mother and father were married or... Absolutely, and, and, and the Kenyan child. government's on record saying somebody stole the records of Obama and Kenya. Stay there. A few more key questions. Donald Trump, going back to Dr. Corsi, uh, where is this going with Donald Trump? Because he helped bring it all to a head, got an early copy of your book. You talked to him. Some national media made fun of you and said, Dr. Corsi claims Donald Trump's talked to him. Uh, I mean, like, oh, you could never talk to the great God himself. Uh, trying to, again, impugn, uh, just totally ridiculous. Well, Donald Trump called me number a number of times, and he was always pumping for information. Uh, I'm convinced Donald Trump was working with Barack Obama. It, look, it's all about money, Alex. By the way, you predicted he would magically get the authorization from their man in Chicago, in Chicago land, Rahm Emanuel, and magically he's getting the casinos now. That's what it was all about. It was about that and also getting a big payday from GE. Remember, GE still owns about 48% of, of NBC, along with Comcast. And GE, of course, sits about at Obama's right-hand side. WNBC! And NBC extended Trump's contract for two years for The Apprentice. I think that was worth $100 million to Trump. And now he's getting the casinos. So Trump came out and said, I want to see the birth certificate. And then, of course, when Obama released this fraudulent forged birth certificate, on April 27th, Donald Trump said, well, that's good enough for me. And I told Donald Trump, he called me after that. And he said again, Trump repeated that he thought that the birth certificate was a forged document. Told me that twice in phone calls after April 27th. That his golf course designer, a computer expert, had called Trump and said the document's an obvious forgery. And I said to Trump, if you believe that, then get out there and demand a forensic examination of the original document in the Hawaii vault, and Trump would not do that. Well, again, for their scripting, they had to build it to a crescendo, then have him act like he was discredited. He creeps off right as your book comes out, and then as folks start looking at that, boom, out pops the bin Laden, all scripted, admittedly all lies. We just don't know what the truth is. I mean, this is so incredibly obvious that they are scared to death of what's in your book. By the way... We have it, a discounted, excellent book. You'll learn so much more in the book, and, and they want to defeat it. Uh, of course, he's had other books that sell a half million copies. This one, only 100,000. That makes it a New York Times bestseller, obviously. We need to get this book out to everybody and attack their dirty ops, their, their dirty tricks, the things they try to do to kill this. Get this book. Get it out to everybody you know. It's available at Infowars.com and bookstores everywhere as well. But again, Dr. Jerome R. Corsi, Ph.D., where's the birth certificate, the case that Barack Obama is not eligible to be president? All of this scripted uh, for right when the book came out on record, showing they're scared of it. Uh, absolutely incredible. Uh, we've only got a few minutes left with you, Doctor. We appreciate your time. Any other little little giblets or tidbits? When are you going to name the names? Well, I'm, I'm starting to now. I'm going to say, say uh, probably tomorrow on World Net Daily that the Nordyke Twins document was the major template used to, to create the forgery. Uh, I'm not going to stop on this at all until we expose the truth. That's the greatest cover-up in American history. We've now got a felony committed in the White House, forged document that Obama is himself responsible for, part of the chain of evidence, in order to stay in power. Uh, all a staged manipulation of the news to try to defeat my book, Where's the Birth Certificate, prevent it from being read, prevent Americans from knowing the truth, which is that Obama is not eligible to be president. Well, uh, in closing, we wish you Godspeed, and obviously as this uh, begins to develop in the next week or so, we want to have you back up uh, just in the next few days. Just as soon as you're ready, please have your assistant email us, and we'll uh, schedule in just a 15-minute pop-in because I know you're busy. The final question is on another subject, but it goes to credibility. If I'm a prosecutor and I've got a convicted liar up on the stand who I believe committed the new crime, I'm going to bring up the fact that they've been caught lying over and over again and Obama has made Richard Nixon look truthful. Bill Clinton look like a choir boy. Uh, I mean, there's no doubt this is a new level of deception and lies where it's just an ocean of lies where the, the truth is not there. So it, it's, it's hard to even get a frame of reference. But Attorney General uh, Eric Holder uh, has now uh, it's come out and even the Associated Press of all places, but isn't getting the attention it needs. And I wanted you to briefly speak to this. 
that the FBI, the DEA, not just the ATF were involved in Fast and Furious, that it was tens of thousands of firearms, not 1,800, uh, that it has been used to kill cops and other people, and that it was going to be used, as they were already doing a year ago, before this was known, to demonize the Second Amendment, right as he now announces his new uh, no-fly, no-buy uh, type deal to restrict firearm ownership in America. And so you have an administration constantly engaged uh, in perjury. Uh, what's your take on how big this is uh, to have this going all the way to the attorney general and his own rats now because they've been caught lying uh, in their own documents that Congressman Issa and others have gotten that they're now turning on the attorney general. I mean, this is, this is huge. It's huge, and it goes right to the Oval Office. The, this whole Fast and Furious, as well as the forging of the birth certificate, is Obama's doing. And uh, I'm now convinced that we'll be able to disclose that probably next week that a White House unit has been responsible for the old bots. The White House has coordinated this attack against the birthers. The entire thing is misinformation. It will be classically KGB, almost as if Obama's entire life and career is an intelligence operation. And the misinformation and dreams from my father is where it begins. It's filled with lies. I expose that and where's the birth certificate? Well, that's what all the CIA people and, and NSA folks I've had on, they say when you look at Obama, it's all a fake history going back decades. Uh, clearly, and the, and the whole family's in different intelligence agencies, that this guy is a purely manufactured creature. The question is, who does he work for? Well, and why can't we get the documents? Why can't we get the travel records, the passport records, the school records? Obama is an undocumented worker in the White House, and that's a classic intelligence cover-up. What I pointed out is now the cover-up is continuing. They're forging birth certificate documents. They're lying about their role in the fast and furious. The entire Obama administration is a lie, and I don't intend to stop, Alex, until we expose fully who's responsible for creating this forged birth certificate, and the responsibility lies in the Oval Office. Well, Dr. Corsi, um in conclusion here, uh, do you agree historically and, and looking at this that this makes the administration even more dangerous, that they're being opposed on their Libya war for constitutional reasons? Yes, and Alex, there's, we'll be able to announce that I'm working with a group of a military that are about to call for a congressional investigation. Uh, the Obama White House should be very concerned about how far they're pushing our U.S. military and should be understanding that people whose careers have been built here on service to the United States are not going to see budget cuts and disrespect to the military and simply stand by. Uh, there's going to be military calls for an investigation of this administration, and they're coming very quickly. It's organizing right but now. But more than that, his, his, his frontal assault on the Constitution, saying he doesn't need Congress for, for taxes, he doesn't on debt ceiling. He doesn't need them for gun control. He doesn't need Congress for new wars. I mean, if, uh, this is off the charts. I've never seen anything move this fast, and I see that as a sign of desperation. It is, and the mainstream media won't report it. The American people, I think, are, are fed up with the mainstream media. It shows like yours, Alex, it's the work we're doing at WorldNet Daily. This is where the real reporting is going on and where the real truth is being told. Our Constitution has never been in more danger than it is today. All right, Dr. Corsi, uh, where's the birth certificate? Available at InfoWars.com. Thank you for joining us. Great pleasure always, Alex. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, folks, I'm telling you, we're in grave danger. I told you three and a half months ago when they had al-Qaeda start attacking Gaddafi, that's on record now, that, that they would either force him to strike Europe back, and they would call that terrorism, and then use that to take our liberties, or they would stage something. And now Gaddafi is saying, I'm going to attack Europe if you don't stop attacking me, he's played right into their hands. And uh, they may, uh, he'll do something. They'll stage something. Got all these White House advisors saying a terror attack would sure help us on record. And we want a domestic attack to blame it on Glenn Beck and Alex Jones. Uh, I mean, even Glenn Beck covered that. He said he's going to be blamed for the new Oklahoma City. Uh, no. If you read all those uh, thinly veiled threats and media matters, and the, it's, it's Glenn Beck and Alex Jones that are going to cause the next attack. And then the very advisors are saying, gee, a new attack would sure help us. You got those two things. I mean, they think we're so stupid. You think it's fun to be on the White House enemies list? You think it's fun to uh, have them uh, trying to set us up for a new OKC? 
but, but it's, it's because we're what we're doing is defending the republic. If you let criminals run things, folks, the sky's the limit. They're not going to stop.